How everybody doing today? My name is Charlie, and y'all just joined in to the Love Connection, and we're about to bring y'all a great topic. Top, we got a top five uh, topics today, and my wife about to uh, break them all down to y'all, my beautiful wife. And um, I love that y'all came in to tune in with us. Okay, so today's topic is the top five things, five things that every parent should know. Um, you know, in our love connection, we have grown to know that we have to have some, you know, some tricks up our sleeve in order to be effective parents. So these are the top five things that every parent should know. We're going to jump right in. So number one, we have to know that every child is different. Like my husband and I, we bump heads on the same thing because our oldest child, he will... <laughs> Oh, he will pull, pluck every nerve in you. And then our, you know, our middle child, he'll do what you ask him to do. And, you know, Charlie will always say, like, why isn't he just doing this like this child? And I'm like, because every child is different. Now, my husband, he'll say, you know, things to try to get them both on the same page. And, like, I, you know, I always say it's different from a woman's perspective because women are more, you know, loving and nurturers. And he's more of a you need to follow directions type person. So he's going to break it down from, your, you know, from his perspective, you know, how he keeps them together, knowing that they're different. Well, you know, in life, you can always deal with people that have different personalities and things of that nature. So you got you got one son that's energetic and you have another son that's a, that like to watch movies and just lay back and be chill. So the energetic one might have some flaws here and there, but the other one might tell the truth all the time, one might lie all the time. So it's the, the communication with the actual child to be able to get them to understand what's right, what's wrong. Because if you got somebody that's impulsive or and they just running off, just impulsiveness, they're going to make a lot of mistakes compared to a person that's thinking before they make a move. So if I'm impulsive all the time and I can't keep myself together, I'm going to make a billion mistakes because I'm not thinking about it. And it's, it's the same thing. Like uh, you might have a child, he's he running over top of everybody because he's trying to score a touchdown. And then uh, he's not thinking about the other person. You know what I'm saying? He's just thinking about winning. But the other person like, oh, man, I, I made a mistake, bro. You all right? He don't have that now. You know what I'm saying? Because he's just trying to win. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's the lessons that you have to teach them to put them both on the same page of understanding. You can be impulsive but have a, a heart and an understanding how to treat people. You know what I'm saying? And understanding being truthful and honest is the way. You know what I mean? Not be telling a bunch of lies and, and everybody's in the bundle like that because you're not being truthful. But that's my take and breakdown on, you know what I mean? Our number one um, thing on the list. Which brings us to number two, because if you have two children and one child is, you know, constantly telling you the truth, even though it hurts them, and the other one will lie quick, it brings us to our number two thing that every parent should know. Don't choose favorites. Like, those children will begin to know, oh, well, you know, daddy like you more than me, or mommy, he always call you more than me. So that child that's already impulsive with, you know, those habits that need to be broken, he might become a lot worse because he's like, well, you don't, you know, he going to pick you anyway, so I'm going to act up. So, you know, we, we believe in our household, you know, everybody's going to get the same it's the, it's the same thing across the board, the same treatment. Now, you, if you make a mistake, you're going to be held accountable for that mistake. But if your brother didn't do it, look, he didn't do it. We're quick to put one son on punishment out in the living room and the other one is in the room having a great time, living his best life. We have no problem with that. So, you know, now Charlie's going to break it down because when it comes to not choosing favorites, it's like sometimes you start to be like, I'm not going to talk to this one because I know he's about to lie. I'm going to just ask the one that would tell the truth. So I know... You know, Charlie has input on that one. How you know? What do you think about not choosing favorites? Well, it's, and once again, like I say, when you're dealing with multiple personalities, and you saying not pick a favorite, it's like this. If I'm gonna break it down clearly, like if you got a child that's continuously doing negative stuff, he's gonna be always on punishment. So he gonna automatically think you choosing the other one as the favorite because he's always getting in trouble. So a lot of times they don't be picking favoritism. Is just the character of the person. You know what I'm saying? So that's just in life, man. Like if you you playing basketball with the other one, he out smoking or whatever, then he wanna come jump shots. And the other one is scoring like 30, 40 points a game. But he want the other one wanna smoke. It's not that it's it's, it's 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 what the person doing basically. It's causing cause and effect. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you get that favoritism thing. But a lot of times it don't be favoritism, it be discipline. 
You know what I'm saying? You discipline the one for making bad decisions. Now, if they both acting the exact same way, they get the standard treatment. But if you going, if I go to your school and they say this individual lying or this individual stealing, that's punishment. And I go talk to the other person's school and they be like, he's an amazing student on the road. Who are we gonna cheer on? We're gonna cheer on the one that's making honor. We're not gonna cheer on the one that's stealing and taking. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna try to teach him to be better, but he's gonna get jealousy anyway. Because he's gonna feel like, oh man, I can't never do that. It's because healthy, you're though. not trying. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think it's healthy. I think um healthy competition is still good. Like if your brother is doing well and you see that he's doing well and you're consistent on punishment, use it, use that as a teachable moment. Let him know, like, listen, if you wanna have the freedom that he has and be able to do the things that he does, I need you to come up to another level. I need you to change your level of thinking. If you don't like being on punishment while the other child is able to play, then you need to stop doing the things that's putting you on punishment. Stop, you know, giving kids a scapegoat and not making them responsible for their actions let kids know at an early age you made a bad choice you know it wasn't that we put you on punishment we gave you you know what I'm saying we chose that child over you you put you on punishment and let me tell you how you put you on punishment you put yourself on punishment when you chose not to listen to your teacher when you chose to take whatever that was from another student and this is why you're sitting here and He's not. Now, it doesn't um, mean that we're putting them against each other at odds against each other, but we want them to understand we don't reward negativity. And I think a lot of times parents have a habit of being inconsistent with their kids. You know, we make that mistake sometimes because, like, my oldest son, he could see our inconsistency. He would try to, like, if he knew he was in trouble when he, he was talking to me, he would try to go upstairs and talk to his dad like, hey, <laughs> I had a great day. You know, because he, he was he was banking on us not communicating because we had very busy schedules. But be consistent with them. And, you know, it's not choosing favorites, but it is applying the, the discipline to the action and being on the same playing field for all of them. And even if you're a child that um, doesn't make you know, the more chill, relaxed one makes a bad decision, give him that same standard and make sure, because technically what happens with the kid that will listen to you a lot faster, he'll learn the first time. And the one that's full of that energy, it'll take him several times to, to learn that that actually is not going to work. Which brings us to our next thing, our third thing that every parent should know. We've already had the first one, which is every child is different. And the second one, not to choose favorites. And that brings us to our third point which is spend time with your kids like you need to know them we talked about you know in our love connection you need to communicate with your kids so you know charlie's gonna break it down because he's really good with talking to the boys well time is always a, a great and amazing thing for any kid growing up in a household where it was just a single mother home and just a desire to have your father there just to play football with you or to play a video game with you, just to get that attention and that time with you, you know what I'm saying? That's like a, a beautiful thing for any kid. You know I mean, I, I was watching an interview with Young Dolph one time when he was talking about his friend, kept talking about money over the actual spending time with the kid. He was, Dolph was like, the kid would appreciate just being, you being there around them. Just to get that, that spending time with their father. To not be there because you don't got a couple of dollars is ridiculous. Why not be there? You know what I'm saying? So time is very important. I, I really believe that from my heart. Yeah, we watched the um, I watched the video online and it was really disturbing to me. It was a, a boy who kept reaching out to his father and he was just saying like, Dad, are you gonna pick me up? Are you gonna pick me up? Are you gonna spend time with me? And in and in the video, um, basically online, they were exposing the point of view that the, the, the father basically was saying, you know, he would come, but he never showed up. I think those moments are horrible when it comes to a child because they need you. And no matter what you think in your mind, I, I always try to tell um, parents and women, and especially, um, you may be going through struggles. Like, you know, we don't always have it all, but even when you are going through the most, like you're struggling to keep the lights on, make sure there's food on the table, you'll notice that you may have only had like a piece of chicken, one box of macaroni, and one can of green beans, and you did the best you could with what you had, but your child will look at you and say, that was the best meal ever. They are so oblivious of the struggles that you go to if, through if you allow them to be a kid and not bring them into your adult struggles. And um, in their eyes, you're the best parent ever. Just because you came in the room and you sat there for a few more minutes and played the game or you went outside and tossed the football, you might have tossed the football with them because you knew um, 
you know, something was going on. Who knows? Maybe the power was out and you didn't want your child to know. So you were creating this, um, this reality for them. Like, oh, we're going to go play football outside so they don't recognize the things that were going on. And they, they're completely oblivious to it if you make life for them amazing you can go in the room with them and read them a story get back to those you know personal moments where you're there for them you need to not be the last person to find out something's going on with your children like definitely spend time with them um that's what my son always says you know i love when i play the game with my dad and he's we both are very busy, but because he takes that time with him, it's important. He's the one that stays in trouble, but he appreciates that time because, you know, he may only have a few minutes in between, but he does get that time. And even if he's not allowed to play the game, you know, he comes out, he talks to him, and he has conversations with him, and he lets him know why he's in that situation because we believe that we're building character in him, you know. So that is our third point. Spend time with your kids, please and thank you. All right, and that's going to bring us to number four. So our fourth point um, that every parent should know is their resources. There are resources. Both of us came from um, environments where we, I ended up homeless. Um, I also ended up in a situation where I needed to get government assistance. So bring your pride down. If you're going through situations, know that there are resources out there. Um, Charlie is really good at being able to break down some of those things that you can do. And then I'll come back on the end and tell you some resources that I know of. Well, you should know if you're saying or the getting the help that you need when you're in a situation that you don't have no food or going to a food bank or whatever the case may be, they might have pamphlets there or things that you might need, wipes and stuff like that. Or even if you have a local church that's uh, giving out baskets or whatever the case may be to help out people that's less fortunate or whatever. I think sometimes pride gets in the way of a person having the things that they need because they're too prideful. But like I always say, if you need it and they're giving you the help, most definitely go get it. Yeah, Charlie was the one that taught me a lot of things that I didn't understand because, you know, I went through things in life, but I didn't want anybody to know. You know, I'd rather go through secretly than to be publicly humiliated. And he taught me how to use those resources. And it, it, one time we needed some food and he was like, you know, we can go to the food bank. I'm like, go to the what? But we went to the food bank and they gave they, it was actually a better experience than I had even, you know, thought of. And I, I, I was like, wow, not only that, you know, if you're at a place and you're not doing, you know, so bad, you have money, but you're trying to make it make it work. Um, well, learn how to coupon. I, I, I get a I get a trip out of when I get to the house and I ask my husband, how do you think how much you think I spent? You know, because um, buying stuff at regular price makes no sense when you can use a coupon and don't be too proud sometimes people in the line behind you they get mad because you're using your coupons and you let them be mad and you be great because at the end of the day you're making life work for you and your family and that money that you didn't spend extra in the store is something that you could use in your household because if you're like us my, we bought my husband bought my son some new shoes on sunday and by wednesday they were ripped so you know, you need to make that work. You need to know your resources and know that there are people out there who do want to help. There are a lot of folks who manipulate resources and it hurts people who really need them. But if you need resources, look, go to your local um, companies and let them know this is what you're going through because it was, there were times when we needed to pay light bills and we had to go to the churches. There were times when we had to go through Salvation Army um, and it was a blessing. So, you know, don't be too proud to take blessings from wherever they come. Agree? All right, and that is um, our fourth to topic, our last one. And, you know, this is our life hack, you know. <laughs> um, out of the five things we believe every parent needs to know. And honestly, I believe this is the one that kind of just seals the deal because parents are all different everywhere. But every parent needs to know that you are doing the best you can. Like, it's the holiday season right now, so I'm going to, like, put it right on the television screen. Listen, do not drive yourself crazy because you can't get a million gifts. Do not drive yourself crazy because you don't, you you know, hack, run up credit cards trying to build this big Christmas. Listen, do what you can because you are a parent every day. Do the best you can. Nobody gets a book or a, 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 a how-to guide on how to be a parent. You sometimes have to do the best you can with what you have. And then there are some parents, you know, both of us went through situations with our parents who did the best they could. And then life, you know, just turned things in a different direction. And you have to be um, 
woman enough or man enough to be able to say, look, I I'm doing the best I can. And don't be so hard on yourself because you'll put yourself in a depression feeling upset that you don't have everything you need, you know. And from a man's perspective, you know, they're providers. So I know it's a little different, but, you know, the fifth point is to do the best you can. He'll shed some light from, you know, to you men on how you're able to focus in this holiday season. Yeah, with me, uh, I believe um, sometimes, like, when you're doing the best you can, you know what I mean, you never know what, what God got in store for you. You can go to the Walmart and you're buying toys for your kids. You might have, like, a couple of dollars or whatever that you got on your check to be able to spend on your presents. And you just having the heart to go there and do what you can, you'll never know what might happen in that moment. You might have somebody that pull you to the side and say, uh, do you need some help or give you a gift card? They got, like, $1,000 on it. You know what I'm saying? You, you just you stay prayed up, you know what I mean? And just believe in the power of God, because God must move in mysterious ways. And when God moves, can't nobody stop it. You feel me? You just got to accept it and embrace it. And that change will come, you know what I'm saying? The best you can do can become even better than you can ever imagine when you stay prayed up and allow your soul to be renewed with God. But always put God first and you will see those changes. So being the best you can be and putting God first will enlighten you into another level. And that's my take on that. That's powerful because when you're doing your best and you're allowing God to do his best, then you know you're... You know you're able to do extraordinary things. And before we go, I do want to share just, you know, one time I was going through really badly in my life. And it was hurting me that I wasn't able to do for my kids. And what he just said was a, a, a true experience for me. I believe that I've met angels several times in my life. And what I mean by that, I had went into Walgreens on Christmas morning. And I really, really, you know, had the desire to do for my kids. But I knew I only had about $25. And if you ever went into Walgreens, all their toys are expensive. So I was going through and I was looking and I was pricing like I always do and putting things back. And I'm like, okay, I finally got into the max of what I had. And I saw this lady who kept following me. This is a true story. She's a friend of mine on Facebook. She kept following me. And I'm like, okay, what can I do for you? And she was like, you know, I saw you put that back. I want to get it for you and I'm just like wow you know it blew my mind so um, as we were in the store she grabbed the things that I had put back and put it into the cart and walked up to the front with me so when we got up to the front she tells the lady at the register I'm gonna pay for all of these things so now I'm boohoo and crying because I'm like wow God you knew you know the desires of my heart and I really wanted these things for my kids and she says to me you know as we're going to the car she's like you know she never did get to have kids and she always wanted to buy Christmas gifts for kids but she had no need to because she didn't have any at home and she asked the Lord to just send her somebody that she could help but she thought because it was Christmas morning it was too late and here I go walking by and I had a need and I'm like, wow. So I'm so thankful for that. And I'm thanking her because I, I believe that you should always t thank God, but thank people. Don't forget to tell someone thank you. So as I'm doing that, you know, I'm getting emotional. I'm crying. And um, I go to get in my car and she shakes my hand. And when she shakes my hand, I felt the paper, but I didn't look at it. Closed my hand. I'm like, wow. I hugged her. And um, when I went to get in my car, I got home. She had given me another $100. So, yes, be prayed up. Have faith. Oh, wow. Have faith. You know, trust. It's going to work out. And all you have to do is just believe. Sometimes believing is like the... It seems like it's a little thing, but it's the biggest thing you could do. You know, it's the biggest thing you do. And that's what he's saying, prayed up. You know, do the best you can, but also leave yourself open for God to bless you. So those are the five things that we believe are most important when being a parent. You know, number one, recognizing that all children are different. You know, number two, not picking any favorites because, you know, children are going to be, ooh, but... Number three, spend time with each of them. Make sure you communicate with them. That time is valuable. You know, number four, make sure you know your resources and stretch your money as much as you can. And number five, you know, know you're doing the best you can with what you have. You know, be prayed up. Trust God, you know, because we're just ordinary people trying to do extraordinary things. Um, before we go, you know, we are still doing our nonprofit, Shaka for You 2. Visit our website, um, shakaforyou2.com. Like and subscribe. You know, if there's any other topics that you would like us to create a video on, we're open to doing that. And we thank you for viewing today. We thank you so much for all of your continued support. So continue to be um, the great support, great and amazing supporters that you are. And we'll continue to post videos that people love and like. Thank you all for tuning in. 
Because again, I want y'all to always remember, put God first, family, and finances. Love connection, baby. I love y'all. <coughs>